I've always known that I was a winner. Right. I felt like I was losing. Right. You know, I, f I felt like a winner that was just in a temporary spot of losing. And, and it was, you know, the circumstances, sometimes we let circumstances dictate where we're at. Right. And, and when you decide that you're not going to let the circumstances dictate how you show up and who you are and how you identify, um, then you're ready to take the next step. You're ready to level up to the next spot in your life. And so, um, just to unpack that, because I think a lot of people feel like that. Some people watching this right now might feel like that. And it's it's not your circumstances that dictate it, man. It's who you believe. Mm. When you look in the mirror, just because you're temporarily losing does not make you a loser. Mm. What up, guys? Welcome back to the Athletic Aesthetic Podcast. This is episode 18. My name is Vinny. I'm here, here with my co-host, Trey. Mm. Trey Tip. What's, what's your Instagram again? At TreyTip06. Man, give this man a follow. Come this on, guy, man. I'm trying to build up that clout, man. Real deal over here. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, we got a killer episode today. Killer man. episode. Killer uh, episode. The Brian Hess. The real Brian Hess on Instagram. Make sure you emphasize the D, though. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Because he got a lot of fake accounts out there, <laughs> man. So, like, <laughs> make sure this you emphasize. must be doing giveaways. I, I did a couple giveaways in the past year. There are so many fake VC2 accounts. <laughs> we already went into last week. I tried to get verified, and they, they just put my ID out to the public. So, I'm just going to step back from that. <laughs> is it, we're done trying that, yeah. huh? The Brian Hess is on today. He's standing behind the camera. That's why I pointed at him. We're going to do a little intro here. But I'm, I'm excited to just honestly just jump into our conversation. For because, sure, man. But is there any, like, housework we need to do? Nothing crazy going on. All I can say is keep your eyes open, man, because, again, these faces will be in different places. So just make sure that you keep your eyes open. Yeah. While you're watching, subscribe, like, do all that stuff that you're supposed to do. Go follow us. Make sure you follow Athletic Aesthetic Pod on Instagram. We're trying to get that thing rolling. And uh, we got some dope content. We've had a, a bunch of people reach out to me just about your story and, like, when we did the episode. And then last episode with Joe and him sharing his story. Uh, so on different platforms, people are starting to connect and, and say, like, you know, thank you for sharing because it's something I'm going through and, you know, all that. So we're actually starting to see people, you know, connect to our show on different platforms through the Athletic Aesthetic Pod account. And um, I'm really encouraged by that. So if you haven't followed it yet, go check it out. You can find the link in either of our Pages we've collabed or posted, shared or whatever. So, yes, sir. Uh, yeah. Anything else? Nah, just the outro. Just how I would like to say it. Yeah. We are athletic aesthetic, and we love you. <laughs> Let's get to it. Let's start. All right. So you'll you'll have to hold. This isn't like a room mic. It's like. If you're not right here, you'll be like, you'll sound like you're in the distance, which so, is annoying. So you want me to cause the same problems for everybody else that you've caused? Yeah, this will be the first episode where we have some solid audio because <laughs> we're in the Brian Hess's office and we got the mural, we got the new setup and we figured it was like past due to have you on, you know, because we've been doing so much together and um, figured why would we go do it somewhere else? This is like, the do it right spot. here. It's the spot, the dojo. Yeah. Come on now. We got some signatures here. Your boys are in town. All these families that were in town last week uh, for a TCS and one team <laughs> meetup. Different. We'll get into like all those things and what what the heck we got going on here behind the scenes. But there's a lot, man. So I'm glad to have you on, first well, of all. Glad to you. be here, man. Yeah, Thanks man. Doing hey, this. my dudes. My yeah. dog, my dog. For sure. I mean, yeah, Trey, are you excited? I'm excited, man, because I feel like I've known this dude forever, but I only know you for a couple months. So we're going to see what happens here. We're going to ask you some crazy questions. Yeah, th this is going to be a hard interview uh, on because for me, I know you. This is the first time I'm interviewing someone that I actually know. <laughs> so it's like <laughs> I, I, it's, I've never done an interview where I have to, like, introduce you because I feel like everyone knows you, but they don't. Right. So maybe give them a, a quick overall of who is Brian Hess. Mm. Elevator pitch. I always well, put Trey on there. Well, that's complex. Uh, <laughs> <clears throat> so born and raised in Uniontown, Pennsylvania. So for those of you who are in Southwest PA, just a small little town, uh, about 20 minutes from WVU, 20 minutes from Morgantown. Um, you know, father of four amazing children, husband, uh, businessman. I've got several companies that I run. Uh, honored to have these two guys as, as part, of, uh, part of that journey. And uh, really, man, just just love life, man. A, a man of faith, and you know, uh, lots going on, but always always 
having my faith in the center of that has helped me, you know, really be able to, to deal with all the things that life has to offer in, in a positive way and, and keep things calm. Um, love being a visionary in business, love creating businesses, love, you know, hatching new things. We'll talk a little bit about some of that stuff and the vision for, you know, what we're actually trying to do here at the Pavement Group and beyond that. Um, but yeah, man, just a Western Pennsylvania born and bred. I spent five years in South Florida living there. But mm. um, when were you there? Uh, 2010 to the end of 2014. Okay. Um, and so, you know, but th these are my roots, man. And I, I love the city of Pittsburgh. Um, I love bringing people in here. You know, we had the one team in TCS uh, meet up last week. And, you know, I just love showing people our city, you yeah. know. And, and when we bring people in here uh, to visit for business, they always leave with the same yeah. thing. Like, man, I can't believe the city's so cool. The people <laughs> are so know. cool. You know, every, everything about Pittsburgh they love. And so, you know, one of the things that I, I joke about, but it's become kind of a serious thing for me is, you know, I want to I make P Pittsburgh Omaha, right? Mm. I got Warren Buffett all over my office here. And, you know, I, I want to be able to hatch businesses here that really bring people to our city um, and show people what we have to offer because I think sure. we have a lot to offer. And, uh, man, I just I love living here. I love raising my kids here. I love having a family here. Um, I love traveling too, but uh, this is this is home for me, and I, I love Pittsburgh. I love the people, and I love what the city stands for. You know, I always say, you know, the Pavement Group really does stand for what the city of Pittsburgh stands for, and that is, uh, you know, innovation tied with you know an old school blue collar type of work ethic, and uh, that's what I believe identifies within this company. The culture that we have here is is that it's we're a bunch of grinders, but we know how to innovate and how mm. to make people's lives easier and you know, what, what better comparison than Pittsburgh, a city that, you know, was, was an old steel town. And yeah. I think that's what people expect when they your, come here. Right? Your dad was a steel worker, right? Yeah. Yep. Uh, is an old steel town. that's you know, dirty and smoky. And then they get here and they're like, oh, <laughs> Damn, man, look yeah. at this. Yeah. What is this? And, uh, <laughs> yeah. So that, that's a little bit about me, man. There's, there's plenty to dig into there, but, uh, that's the yeah. high level of who I am and what I stand for and what I love. Love that, man. That's the end of the podcast, guys. Thanks for watching. <laughs> it's been a great time. No, for real, man. Um, I feel like, you know, just getting to know you, I feel like you have lived 35 lives. Like you're, you've done so much in, in such a short period of time. Um, so I want to, you know, not focus too much on like the whole, like we're going to be telling a story together for a long time to come. So we're going to get sure. into a lot of the details and things that made you who you were and um, you know, as we're building something here, which I don't know how much of it we want to share on this episode, but we got a lot of stuff moving. A lot. Um, but uh, I do want to like talk about kind of the origin story of us three, uh, collabing and getting together and, um, kind of like maybe start there, like how, you know, you're what five years, we're five years old right now, right? We just yep. celebrated at yep. the pavement group, um, which you found Trey first, right? So tell me how that happened. How did you link up with Trey? What was the first time you heard of him? Yeah, it, ironically, that's another Pittsburgh story. It's, you know, trying to bring people to Pittsburgh. So, you know, part of top contractor school, we have two retreats per year. So we do destinations. Uh, we've been to Fort Lauderdale. We've been to Marco Island. We've been, you know, to all kinds of places around the U.S. And, and one of the things that was important to me was to bring those people, you know, back home here so that I could show them my city, our city. And uh, when I did that, uh, one of my boys from high school, Will James, was one my of the dog. speakers uh, Shout out that, the that Will. I wanted, Will. wanted yep. to bring in, you know, because I didn't want people to just experience Pittsburgh, but I wanted them to really experience uh, what's important to me in Pittsburgh and the people that I'm connected to. And um, I couldn't think of anybody more uh, Pittsburgh blue collar and a story that identifies, you know, with, with who we are as a city than Will. And so I asked Will to come speak, and along with Will coming to speak, uh, this guy showed up at, at the retreat. <laughs> and uh, Just showed up? Yeah, yeah. pretty, pretty yeah. much. Yeah, that was pretty no, much no. it. <laughs> uh, but, uh, yeah, he showed up at the retreat and, and it kind of observed what we were doing. And then, you know, through conversations with Will, I believe, mm -hmm. you know, it was like, man, I'm looking for something to do. And, uh, you know, eventually hit me up and was like, hey, man, you know, I'm looking for something to do. And, you know, I, I believe – this might be the place for me to do it. And my first initial response was like, what the hell am I going to do with a football player inside <laughs> of a paving company, you know? And, yeah. uh, but I said like, you know, I always am open to meeting great people, right? Because even if I don't have a place for somebody, mm -hmm. um, maybe somebody else that I know can, can use their talents, 
um, or they can be a contributor to something else that we're doing. And so I had lunch with Trey and literally within 15 minutes of our conversation, <laughs> I was great. like, I know exactly uh, what, what I thought we could get him uh, going doing, which was, you know, we're, we're looking to give back a lot. Every right? day. And so Every day. with giving back comes responsibility. And so, you know, having somebody that uh, really exhibits that, that responsibility, those connections, and has done the work to really establish relationships in the city that would make it easier for, for us to be able to give back and give back effectively, uh, really opened the door. And then once he got in here, man, and I started to get to know him, I was like, damn, man, there's so many things that he's talented at that, you know, that are yeah. uh, incredibly useful inside of the business. And uh, yeah, so that, that's literally how we met. Um, you know, it was a, it was a, was it one lunch or a couple of lunches? It was like one. Had? It was like one. Yeah. Take me through that from your perspective. From my perspective, bro, it was one thing that he said that really made me want to come here. And he was like, you're a winner who feels like a loser. And I was like, oh shit. <laughs> like, cause it hit me and I was like, Dang. I'm tired of feeling that way. Right. Because I had an experience of where I played on a team where we won the ACC championship, right? But in the same sense, I didn't get what I personally wanted out of it, right? Like, I didn't get a chance to be a part of that. And I've been sitting with that, sitting with that, sitting with that. And when he had said that, I was like, all right, Trey Tip, it's about time you started winning on your own. You feel what I'm saying? So I've always been a team player. I've always been that guy who would stand up for the team. But it was time to take care of me. And I felt like coming here was an opportunity for me to do so, was to take care of me, but also be a part of a strong team. So when that happened, I was like, all right, it's almost a no-brainer. You know what I mean? Especially because my mentor, Will, he, uh, those two are close. You know what I mean? They talk a lot. They had a lot of conversations, and he recommended it immediately. After I talked to him, he was like, yeah, go see Brian. I think that would be perfect for you. Yeah. So after I got to meet Brian, I was like, yeah, bro, it's a no-brainer. Because I have a very tough time, and I tell this dude all the time, I have a really tough time with following people. Mm -hmm. Like a real tough time. Because <laughs> not everybody's a good leader. Yeah. A lot of people lead, but not everybody's a good leader. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So I wanted to make sure if I was going to go into an experience where I was going to take my first job, first ever actual job, right, where this right. could be a career, right? I wanted to be behind somebody that was actually doing the right stuff. Right. And I felt like he was doing the right stuff. So I was like, yeah, I'm on. Let me know. Right. Go on it. Couldn't, I couldn't identify more with that. That's, that's exactly how I felt. It was, it was the same thing. Like, if I'm going to get behind someone, I got to know, you know, and I checked all the boxes and talked to all your employees and um, checked all the boxes, man, and then we just made it happen. And I don't want to fast forward too much through the story here, but same, same feelings. It was like, you know. We're gassing you up here. It's the last time it's going to happen, right? I, I, I just want to unpack something that he said there because I think there's a lot of people that are going to listen or, or watch this that can identify with, with what he said. I remember we were driving right past Napa Prime. Yes, we were. Uh, in the car on the way to Off the Hook. And uh, he was explaining to me just kind of how he was feeling in life. And I think that a lot of people experience that, man, like where, you know, you, you know, you know you're, you're meant for something big. Yeah. Uh, but you just haven't found it yet. And, and I felt like that a lot throughout my life. And, uh, and I said, man, I, I felt like that. And there was a time in my life where, you know, and, and that's, you know, you can have a tough time in life, man, but if you keep believing that you're a winner and you keep trying, you keep pushing forward and you keep making connections and keeping the engine moving, um, the rest is, it becomes undeniable, right? You cannot wake up every single day and do all the right things and somehow get the wrong results. It's not how life works. Yeah. Right. And so, you know, both of you guys ended up here um, you know, you, you can say you're gassing me up, but it's like you ended up here because you gassed yourself up, right? Because you showed up no matter what. And right. even when, even when temporarily you feel like things aren't going your way and, and adversity hits you, um, you wouldn't be sitting here if you didn't keep showing up, uh, regardless of the circumstances, right. because, you know, you would curl up in a ball like most people do in the world and say like, well, it's not for me. I'm just going to go do this. I'm just going to settle into whatever people tell me I am. Yeah. And uh, I'm going to stop taking the risk. I'm going to, I'm going to start listening to all my family members that tell me, you know, whatever it is, you know, over yeah. the, over the years, they thought I was crazy. They thought you were crazy. They 100%. thought you were crazy. Yeah, they still think I'm crazy. <laughs> Until they don't. Right. And, uh, and I think that's important for people to realize. It's like you make a decision in an instant. If you're feeling that way, if you're feeling like a loser, you're feeling like temporarily you're losing it's a decision to identify yourself as a loser or a winner and you get to choose hundred percent. And in a moment, if you've been telling yourself that for the last two years in a moment, you can become a winner by just making the decision. Whew. It's just like a little switch. Whew. It is. Flip. It's, it. it's, not, it's not more complicated than that. People yeah. want it to be more complicated, but it's not, that. it's yeah. not. 
Absolutely. And and it doesn't mean that you instantly start winning as society defines it, mm. but you can start winning in your life because winning is not about money. It's not about success. It's about fulfillment. It's about doing something every day that you feel like you're a winner because you get to do what you love. 100%. Yeah. Because you get to do something that that gives to other people, that values people, that you know makes other people better and makes yourself better. And if you do that for enough days in a row, the rest is history, man. It's just how it works. Man. Yeah. Couldn't agree more, man. Couldn't agree more. I mean, go ahead. No, I'm just sitting here thinking, man, like, even when we got the chance to be around Drew, right? Like, when we first met you, it was more so like everything had to come together. You know what I mean? Like, everything had to fall in the right place at the right time. Because when we were talking about possibly doing murals in here, Brian was like, he's scrolling through his stuff, and he's like, I want that guy. Like, he didn't even question. He said, I want that guy. I was like, all right, I'll hit him up and see what he thinks. Next you know, I hit you up, bro, and you're with it. We meet up, and I'm looking yeah. at you like, wow, like, this actually works. But, again, <laughs> Vinny was late, ladies and gentlemen. That is his number one token thing that he's going to be. It's a guarantee. I covered this. Uh, I'm not even going to talk about it. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> no, we're working on it. He said we're working. I actually, I do, I, I've, I've, um, I've identified it as not just a funny, quirky thing about my personality, but I've identified it as an actual issue. And I'm going <laughs> to fix it. I'm going to fix it. Bro. We're going to fix it together. Proud of you. Proud of you. Um, but yeah, so talking about, you know, how we met and all this, um, you know, the original goal was to have me come in here and do some murals, which <laughs> now I don't know what you're supposed to do. I don't know what I'm supposed to do now. <laughs> so, yeah, we're still we're trying to figure it out. figuring it out on the fly. Um, but yeah, man, how do you see, I guess, um, this evolving? Um, I mean, that's a big question. Uh, but like, what do you see on the horizon? What what kind of things are you excited about right now? And not only just with, with one team, but with the pavement group, all the things that you got going on. Yeah, yeah I, I think that, you know, the, the purpose of business, uh, and I said this to you at the exhibit, but, you know, this is this is obviously easy to see for people as, as art, right? And... Uh, to me, business is art, right? And it's, you know, how do you fulfill your purpose in life through business? And so uh, business really is as simple as solving a problem for people. And, and when you can solve a problem, uh, there's money exchanged. And if you can solve it faster and make people's lives easier, there's more money exchanged and it's exchanged a little bit uh, faster. And so, you know, I've, I've always thought that you know, the pavement group as an entity is the, you know, it's, it's the center of everything, right? It's the, it's the company that solves, you know, thousands of people's problems across the country when it comes to their parking lots and sidewalks and things like that. But really it's, it's the, you know, it's, it's the company that will hatch the eggs that will, that will do so many different things. Right. And that is, um, you know, top contractor school was, uh, an organization that was founded as a mission to be able to give back to the people that give so much to us. Right. And you guys see that you met a lot of those people last week and, you know, our mission is to change the construction industry. It's to positively impact uh, those people out there that work in the construction industry and their families, which you can relate to. Right. It's like, you know, when you grow up, my dad was a steel worker, but it's the same kind of industry. Right. And it's right. like, same concept. yeah, same concept. And, you know, my dad worked a lot of hours uh, when I was a kid and, you know, for me, I look at it and say, like, how could I take uh, these companies that we work with that are part of Top Contractor School, that are part of our uh, one team at the payment group, and how can I, how can we collectively impact them so that uh, their families, you know, see them more, uh, sp get to spend more time with them, get to take more trips with them, get to come to uh, our one team meetup with their yeah. kids and, like, the kids interact and all that kind of stuff. So I think, you know, there's a whole, you know, whole array of things that uh, we will create as a company that will serve those contractors first and foremost. And then beyond those contractors, there's a million different things that we can do that connect that whole mission together. And, right. and one of those being, um, you know, helping athletes and, and getting, you know, connected to athletes in our region that really help us connect to the culture of Western Pennsylvania. Right. That yeah. was the, the initial um, goal of us, you know, doing the first NIL deal in Pennsylvania was um, personally, I, I just think the world of Rodney Gallagher. And I think, you know, as a high school athlete, as a, as a, 
young man that was a freshman in high school to have the idea of like, man, I can sell t-shirts and I can, you know, do something, his whole family, right? His sister, his dad, his sisters and his dad, you know, they're, they're putting in the work and then they're giving that money away. And so uh, they're giving the money to Children's Hospital, I believe, right? Yep. And so, you know, for me, it was like, man, this is, this is something that I'm interested in because I know sports is culture. Mm -hmm. And if we're going to connect to the culture of these communities that we serve and we want to uh, give back to in Western Pennsylvania and beyond, what better way to do it than, than through sports? 100%. And so as I started to, you know, really get connected to sports uh, through that deal with Rodney and through conversations, extensive conversations with Trey about just kind of how sports work, that took on a whole new uh, meaning for me of like everything that is challenging to find and that is missing in business for so many people is also challenging and missing in sports and 100%. athletics. And so it's like, you know, to me, it's like, how can we serve? How can we help? How can we connect? And every situation we find ourselves getting into, it always becomes a two-way street. Yeah. It becomes this like, we can pour into these people and what they give us in return is amazing. It's and beautiful. and so, you know, one, one of the key things that we say all the time is like, we just, we just want to be givers, man. And we want to find places where we can do that. And so as we do that, you know, as we plant those seeds out there, you know, the harvest just becomes automatic that it comes back to us because we're building a community of people. And so, you know, when we look at uh, going to the pirate game last week with well over a hundred people, uh, you look around there and you see, you know, a lot of the fabric of what we've been able to put together. And so, you know, that's a complex answer to your question, but it's like, mm -hmm. who knows where it goes, man. But yeah. it, it's exciting to have all of those opportunities that we can uh, leverage to just make people's lives better. And as long as we can do that, man, the business part of it, uh, collecting money and reinvesting that money becomes pretty simple. Yeah. <laughs> And to, I want to dig in a little bit to what you said there about the whole NIL landscape. And um, I know that you guys being the first NIL deal for a high, high, high school athlete here in Pennsylvania is a, is a big deal. Um, other than just being the race to the first high school athlete NIL deal, why did you think that was so important? And what, I guess, what, how do you see that kind of shaping sports culture um, mm. outside of just um, the athletes getting money? You know what I mean? You know, I, I think when it comes to the importance of that deal, what, what was important to us was uh, being the first was to be a great example mm -hmm. of, like, how that deal could be put together. And I, right. said, I said to Trey from the beginning, you know, NIL to the common person is just a way for athletes to get money. Um, and, and I believe that's wrong because I think the money or whatever financial investment is made – is such a small piece of, of what the athlete should get out of it in exchange for um, who they are and what they represent and the work ethic and all of the things that go into, you know, an athlete's um, performance and who they become, right? Because now athletic performance is just a factor in the whole, in the whole game. And so to me, I looked at it and said, I believe that uh, the way that NIL has been done to this point, I just felt like there was more to it. Um, you know, I don't want to say it was wrong. I just think there's more to it or there's a better way. Sure. And I think that uh, for us, when we looked at Rodney and we said, well, this is a person who, you know, for four years of his high school career has been giving back. Well, how do we do something that doesn't take from the athlete, but levels them up to a new level by uh, being able to, you know, contribute to them and put them in positions to help us give back make better relationships in the community, make better relationships with people, introduce them to, you know, our network of people and all the people that we know and do something that makes an impact together. Because to me, it's like, I believe that everybody in the world wants to give, uh, but they don't always know how. Right. And, and right. even if they want to give, they know how to give. Maybe they don't know how to give at the next level. And so for us, it was important to set the example of like, Man, you don't have to, you know, just have a somebody, you know, whatever it is, like hand out sandwiches or represent, you know, whatever it is. You can get creative with these deals where everybody wins. The business wins, the athlete wins, and the community wins. And so the way that we went about it was uh, to partner with somebody that really identified with that giving nature and, and to be able to make an impact together. We're working on several more 
that are all in the same, you know, realm of things. And so for us, it's like, you know, we don't, we don't want somebody to take up, uh, to show up and just take a bunch of pictures right. uh, or show up and, you know, ultimately, you know, use them right. or so take Instagram from them. flex right. at that point. Yeah. It, it, <laughs> it's not, it's not that man. I think that the biggest flex is how can you improve people's lives? Come on. And when we, when we can focus on that, we can focus on, Valuing people, valuing the athlete, valuing the business, and what we can all do together, I think we set a great example of what we need to see more in the world, which is how do we how do we just make a, a the world a better place together? That's simple. Yeah, you know what I mean, how can we make the world a better place? And that was something that even when me and Brian had sat down and talked about it, right? We were sitting there thinking like, we don't want to take from these athletes, bro. Like they get taken advantage of too often. So what I really appreciate about him is he thinks about giving with without expecting anything in return. Mm -hmm. There's not many people on this entire planet who want to do that. You know what I'm saying? Like most people, when they give something, they expect, I need to get something back. Right. With what he was trying to do and what we decided to do is not only to give, but we wanted to give more because now we don't only have our hands on athletes, right? We have our hands on the future leaders. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And that is the most important because yeah. the, the athlete, and let's be realistic, the athlete leads the community. Everybody knows the athlete in that community. Doesn't matter who they are, doesn't matter where they are, they know that, oh, that's that guy over there. Mm -hmm. So if he's doing the right things, the next kid who could be that guy is also gonna do the right things. Yeah. So I felt like and he felt like we need to have our hands on that personally. Yeah. You know what I mean? I love I love that you guys made it work with Rodney uh around what he was already doing. Um I think that's like really encouraging for people listening because I respect uh, you know, when I meet people and and they start something without knowing exactly oh, where this is going to go, where's the money coming from to make this happen, who's going to do X, Y, and Z. I love when people just start doing something. And then it just it seems like you said, if you do all the right things over and over and over, the result is going to be successful. And it might not be exactly what the successful is in your mind, but uh, you know, if you do the right things, I feel like you know, God's picture is always you know, greater than what we can ever ask or imagine or 100%. understand. So like, if you lean into those things over and over, like, that goal that you have in your mind is actually small, you know? Yeah, and, and I think, I think one of the other keys is, you know, making the athlete the center of it. It's, it's not about, you know, us putting our logo or putting our brand all over something. It's like when the athlete is elevated and the athlete has a relationship with us, you know, it, it's relationship capital is everything. Right. And so for us, it's like, how do we, how do we treat these athletes as uh, people that, you know, to the, to the level that they want, they just want to be part of what we're doing. And, and they, they see the community and they see value in the people that they meet through us. And that's really, to me, that that's what it's all about. It's yeah. not about, you know, them wearing our logo or uh, anything like that. It's about how do we put them in a position that really elevates them. And th there's a lot going on in that realm that we don't talk about and won't talk about because, um, fr frankly, <laughs> We just don't need, you know, we don't right. need or want any credit for anything that we do um, that, you know, we just want to give to people. Yeah. And we want we want to help them become better in every aspect of their life in any way that we can. And that is, to me, um, that's what those relationships should be. It's like, it's always a, it's always a two-way street. Um, but if you can give first, man... Uh, what comes back in return of that is always uh, greater than it would ever be by you trying to take something from somebody. I agree. Yeah. Um, I was thinking even driving in here today, so this is kind of like a different topic here, but um, still on the same topic. Um, I went and watched Trey coach yesterday. Okay. <laughs> so for the first time I seen this man, like you think he's in his element here? Bro, <laughs> this man is going to coach an NFL team someday to a Super Bowl. Like, out, out, you've seen it here on episode 18 of the Athletic Aesthetic oh, Podcast. Nah, I don't know about that. We're going to see <laughs> This man, and if you don't, like, the amount of lives that you're going to change, bro. Like, I watched you literally take a kid from not knowing how to make a cut to running routes yesterday and, like, I mean – full like route tree type shit in like two hours. <laughs> and I know that you've been working with these kids and half the time it's just getting them to pay attention because and, and relating like, like you, you had one of the kids, which I actually owe him a, um, he asked for an athletic aesthetic shirt. So I, I got to get you one for him. Okay. Okay. Um, I don't know his name. That was my first time with them, but, um, 
bro, he was like doing the cuts kind of like wrong and whatever. And you you saw it in your head and you said, you're just a basketball player. Do it like this and related it to basketball. And bro, next rep, he's out there <laughs> like just perfect. <laughs> yeah. Like I'm like, damn, dude, how did you? It was a, that's his art, bro. Like you were saying, your art is business. <laughs> And I know you're you're do, you're gonna do incredible things with us here and with the nonprofit world and all this, but the goal is, bro, to get you enough freedom that someday you just sit out there and coach and like <laughs> really change the world. Man, that's the maybe goal. Maybe we'll man. just buy an NFL team. You can coach that one. Hey, Done. Hey, let's do it. I'll do that the happens. uniforms. That happens. I got some goals behind that. Let's, let's talk. We can really talk now. Let's do nah, it. Man. I mean, at the end of the day, bro, it goes back to what we always talk about, right? And I always, I ask you guys, I ask everybody that I meet that I want to do business with and or want to work with, right? Do you believe you can change the world? That is not an easy task. Look at the world that we're in right now. Is that an easy task? That's an easy answer. No. But with that said, the reason why I coach the way that I coach is because I'm that focused on it. That's where I see my life going. It doesn't matter what realm I'm in, whether I'm here, here with NIL deals and pavement or whether I'm out there coaching, I know what my actual goal is. Mm -hmm. And the reason why I'm here is because not only do I believe I can change the world, you two both said, yes, I believe I can change the world. People are scared of that. Yeah, I was skeptical at first when you asked me. I was like, I don't know, man. <laughs> you know what I mean? It takes a lot of money to do that. And it, you guys are like, I got you. <laughs> it was that simple, bro, because it seems like it's not that simple, but it's really just, again, I always say, and I go back to it every time we do a podcast, it just takes a little bit of care. Just a little bit of care. Yeah. And if I teach you on how to care just a little bit more, you're going to teach somebody else how to care a little bit more. Right. I don't got to change the world. I just got to change the right people, the right leaders, right? Learn that from him. I was so convinced in my head. I was like, I'm going to change everybody. I'm going to change every single thing I can, right? Yeah. But you can't do that, right? Because you're not going to have the, the ears of every community. You don't know every community. You don't know what that lifestyle in every community looks like. Yeah. But if you get the leaders of those communities and you change the way they think and to change the way that they move, yeah. now they have control of what they do in their community. Mm -hmm. That's what makes it important. That's why you doing the right thing and being disciplined is so important. Yeah. Same thing with those kids, right? We just talked about it. Who's the leaders of their community? Those athletes. So I feel like it's my job and my duty to give these kids everything that I got from leadership, from discipline, from coaching, and brotherhood. One thing I feel a lot of coaches go wrong is they treat the kids like they're just kids. Mm -hmm. No, I want you to call on me like you're my little brother. Coach Trey, I don't know what to do. Call me and I'll come pick you up. Or Coach Trey, I don't know what this looks like. Call me, I'll come figure it out. That's real brotherhood. Yeah. I could trust him like a brother. I could trust you like a brother. Otherwise, there'd be no point in us right. doing any of this. You know what I'm saying? So in anything that I'm doing, man, the reason why I love what I'm doing is because I'm around the people that I'm around. I surround myself around really good people. And I can include you guys into that. You know what I mean? So it's easy for me to be a good coach when you're around good people. Jesus started with a small crew, bro. <laughs> Super small. And uh, I tell people that all the time, man. It's like, you know, it's it's one person at a time. It's one soul at a time. It's It's that person that's in front of you that matters. And, you know, it's easy for me to say, yeah, you can change the world because I, I believe you truly do it one person at a time. And uh, through that, you know, look what happens, right? You know, uh, going, going back to the beginning, you know, yeah. like they say, you know, Jesus was a great marketer because uh, <laughs> he was able to mobilize and get people yeah. out there spreading the word. 100%. And, uh, that's what it takes, man. And that's, you know, on a, on a different scale, that's what we're trying to do. It's like, you know, when we put the message out there, we give people hope, we give people encouragement, uh, we show people what is possible in the best way that we know how. And we're, we're far from where we're going to be, but when we can be an example to people, and, and by no means are we perfect, man. We screw up every day, we make mistakes every day, but through, through those mistakes, we just had a call this morning, and I got off, uh, got off a call with Mike this morning, and I said, man, what we are learning through this, and it's a, it's a hard situation. What we're learning through this is so valuable that it didn't. It wouldn't matter if we weren't getting paid a penny to do it. Um, and that is that's really what life is about. It's like how do you go through life? How do you just keep encouraging people, valuing people, spending time, you know, investing into people every day, uh, setting at the end of it. I always say this, you know, no matter what, man, being a being a father, me being a father the best thing we can be is to be an example. You're not always going to be able to be there. You're not always going to be able to be present. But if they know daddy's out there hustling and they know daddy's out there grinding, they know daddy's out there doing it for them, yeah. uh, that's the example that they need to be able to, to create their own life in the image 
of what it is that you're doing as an example. And so for me, that's what I think about all the time. When, when times are tough in my life, I think, what do I need to do right now to be a good example that when, when that little five-year-old looks up at me, he knows I'm not afraid. He knows I'm going to hit the adversity head on. He knows I'm going to tackle whatever it is. Because if I'm weak, then what's he going to be? Same thing. Come Same on. thing. Come right? on. And preaching. so, you know, to me, it, that is what this is all about. You, you know, your future children, your children. It's like, how can we show them, man, that anything is possible? Yeah. That an artist can step into a business and, and thrive. Yeah. Not just survive, but thrive. thrive but create Come on. something that's special. And, and that... You know, you can, hopefully this gives other artists yeah. an open mind. Like I've said to him, like, man, you need to tap into these companies that are out there because they have the financial resources to pay an artist 100%. more than an individual person that, that wants to collect art can. And so to, to broaden the horizons of artists, it doesn't matter whether it's the guy behind the camera, the Shout athlete, out. the artist, Everybody has a place in business, man. You just got to find your home. You got to find on. your tribe. You got to find your family. And when you find them, uh, man, just go all in and, and hold nothing back, and the rest will be history, man. Hey, V, I'm going to give you some credit right now, okay? Had a, somebody text me the other day and was like, hey, I got an artist. Is there any way he could fit in at the pavement group? I see you're already working with the artist, and he seems <laughs> to be doing really well. <coughs> this kid's from Italy. Hey, maybe we're related. Maybe, <laughs> maybe, but he's from Italy, <coughs> has no idea, that, barely speaks the language, right? Mm -hmm. But he said that from what he's seen being in the city of Pittsburgh, there's an artist that's doing really well inside of a community that has nothing to do with art. Is there a place for me? You just gave somebody hope by doing something that you already knew that you were doing, bro. And that's something right, special, right. man. That is, it was special <laughs> to me. I almost cried. I was like, dang, <laughs> what? Right. You over here supposed to be doing pavement. There's been so many, <laughs> so many moments since we all started working together that have genuinely brought my grown ass to tears. Like, <laughs> I, I, I really mean that. And I, I shared something with you guys. Like, even we talked briefly about the pirate game that we, uh, we were at this past weekend and we were there for the home opener. And, you know, I, I, the, I never really cared about baseball much growing up because, I mean, Pirates were terrible for a long time. and I Every just year is our year. I was so caught up in football, you know, and I liked hockey here and there. I would watch, you know, when the games mattered. But um, I was kind of a fair weather fan. But football was my main <laughs> thing. Um, but baseball, I, I remember the year my dad got sick uh, was – uh, the year that, you know, they made the postseason run and Kutch won MVP. And, you know, there, so there was just such like a hype around the Pirates that year. And that was the year I moved back in with my parents to like take care of my dad. And so I have so many memories watching those games, watching A.J. Burnett say, down, you know, and like all of that. So to have him throw out the opening pitch to Russell Martin, have Kutch's return home. I'm there with like a painting of Kutch. You're hyping me up, like basically hanging yourself over the balcony just to like get people to see it and like, Bro, it, it just brought me in tears. I actually had a moment watching him film um, God Bless Him. And I say him, my camera guy. He's in the military. He's, he's active in the military, and he's filming us sing at a baseball park, God Bless America. Bro, that moment, like, those are the moments you don't forget. And, and all of that relates to, like you said, the right people being in, 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 in a team and have, like, this collective, you know, no pun intended, one team, you know, mentality. Um, I don't know how to transition out of this, but I'm just like on a soapbox right now, just telling you how I feel. <laughs> you feel me? You. Like I, I think I think it's you know an important place to stop because you know so many businesses, man, and and I I get the the blessing of you know mentoring many businesses and beyond the construction industry where I mentor a lot of businesses, I I get asked a lot of questions about businesses, and most of the time, what's missing in a business is exactly what you're describing, which is Man, when you can connect to people's hearts, and I, and I use the phrase valuing people, which comes from John Maxwell, uh, probably the greatest mentor of my life. Um, if you can touch people's hearts, man, everything else is easy. You know? and, and so when you can touch people's hearts, when you can make you know, the guy behind the camera feel significant because of his service and because what that means to you, that person is going to give a little more in everything, right? And that's how we become our best, through people seeing us, seeing the gifts that we have. You know, one of the things that I always say about leadership is, like, the best leaders uh, can identify people's gifts. 
And when I was a kid, I remember, you know, my grandmother was one of those people, man. No matter how crazy the ideas that I had as a kid, she always encouraged them. And she always saw the gift that I had for connecting with people and for seeing people and being able to carry conversations to people. And I think that's what's missing, man. In this world of social media, in this world of technology, in this world of everything being fast moving and non-emotional and non-connecting, it's, it's the moments that allow us to take a second and really be grateful and appreciate where it is that we're standing for that minute, right? That like that, that first pitch could connect you back to watching Pirates baseball with your yeah. dad. Um, that our, our friendship that we've been able to create gives all of us another level of hope that maybe we didn't have before. It doesn't matter where you're at, man. It makes no difference how successful or unsuccessful or whatever it is because, you know, for me, man, it's relationships that are everything. And so when we are able to be present and make those relationships the very best that we can, um, that's what creates the very best. It gets the best out of people because we give more when we feel more. And I think that, you know, it's this world of technology that's, you know, got us sending automated emails and AI this. And listen, we use all of that stuff, but we will never lose the old fashioned approach of shaking people's hands, looking them in the eyes, giving them a hug, telling them how significant they are, noticing their gifts, telling them how special they are to us. And, and that, that to me is what makes it all work. And it doesn't matter what business you're in. It makes no difference whether that business is your family, your church, your community, a business. It makes no difference. It, that, that is what matters to people, and it's what will matter to people forever. And that's, that's powerful, man, because I was talking to Will the other day, and he was like, AI is getting to a level where humans really don't have to do much, right? And he was like, but the one thing we can't forget is we can't forget to be a friend. We can't forget to be a human. Right, because there's certain things that AI can't do. They can't share that human experience. They can't share that that person-to-person -person experience. And as I sat down and thought about it, man, I was like, we can't let that die, because now more people are finding ways to stay away from other people. Bro, I got an ad for an app on my phone the other day that was a AI text like friend that you could text and respond, and it texts you back. It's like you're texting somebody. I was like, this is the saddest ad. I need to start speaking other things into my phone right Seriously, now. man, it, it's crazy because it's like, bro, like we're losing a sense of human-to-human -human interaction. You see some of these kids now, when they get around adults or other humans, bro, they don't even know how to speak to another human being because they're so stuck and focused on the thing that's on their screen. So what I challenge people to do is when you get home, tell your kids to put the phones away. Or when you get home, right, stay off of your computer. Or when your kid's crying, let's do this one. This one's a different one. I, I noticed this, right? I was, wa I was walking through the park, and I noticed this. This little kid was crying, and this mom just didn't want to deal with it, so she handed her kid an iPad. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. I challenge you to not hand, that, hand her that iPad, and I challenge you to actually sit your daughter down and have a conversation mm -hmm. because that's what's going to make a difference. Like you said, your little boys, your daughter, are looking up to the father that they have. So if dad's not here, you know dad's out there grinding. Dad's not somewhere else doing something wrong. He's out here grinding, right? Yeah. But even when I am here, be present. And you are very present. I commend you for that, man. And that you're also very present, right? So me going forward in my life, I want to make sure that one day when I have my children, I will also be present. Yeah. But I do challenge every human being out there, stop running away from actually being interactive with your family, with your kids, with your friends. I don't want to just text you. I want to see you. Mm -hmm. That, that, that reminds me of the conversation we had last week that I think led to uh, this podcast happening in the first place. Because, you know, let, let's look at college sports, right? Mm -hmm. And we talk about statistics. Right. And the access to information. And, uh, you know, we have it here. Statistics and business. You know, when, when you look at analytics and you look at, you know, who's performing, who's overachieving, who's falling behind, who's just never forget that there are human beings behind that. Mm. And when you see somebody underperforming, uh, and we, we use the NCAA tournament as the example, um, what do we notice about the NCAA tournament this year, the men's basketball all tournament? All over the place. All, all over, place. over the place. The seedings, you know, there were more uh, more <laughs> like, you know, uh, middle of the road or lower ranked teams in the brackets that made it far. So we got into that conversation about why would that be? Right. And so – Culture, or what you're talking about right now, is, in my opinion, it's not a it's not a coincidence that San Diego State, University of Miami, UConn, are, 
are, are the places that ended up in the funnel of that. Because what to me, it's like the transfer po- portal opens. Right. And so the coaches who haven't, who have maybe only looked at the statistics and haven't had real conversations with their players, what happens to those players? They leave. And where are they getting pursued by? Well, it seems to me that when those teams that are typically not in that far into the tournament, right, uh, Miami and San Diego State, well, why would people want to go to Miami and San Diego State? Well, I'm assuming the coaches, <laughs> the coaches play a part in that, but I'm sure the weather doesn't hurt. <laughs> and, and the fact that you have a transfer portal that you can enter and go any place that you want. Free now, agency. Um, the ability to be present as a leader in college athletics um, and beyond that, as a father, whatever it is, is more important than ever. And so to your point, it's like don't utilize technology as a crutch. Don't use statistics as a crutch. Nothing will ever replace human connection and human relationships that allow people to retain employees, players, whatever it is, and I think that um, we're learning through that right now as a society in, in living color, man. We're, we're working through all of the change that has happened, social media, technology, AI, and leaders, the, the real leaders in the world, the people that come out on top are going to be the ones that utilize the tools but never lose the relationship. Come on. you speaking straight to the gospel, man. And what's <laughs> crazy is it's like, UConn, right, in 2020 when they lost, and I believe it was like the Sweet 16 or earlier than that, um, their coach said, don't sleep on us, we'll be back. Now UConn this past year beat every single team on their way to win the national championship by 20 points (laughs) or 17, 15 plus. That goes to show you he's putting in that time and effort with his kids. You watch his kids speak in any interview, it's about who? The coach, the team, the coach. The team, he is pouring into those people. That's the reason why even where I'm at right now, like I know a lot about business because you poured into me. I know a lot about art because you poured into me. And I like to think that I also poured into you guys in some type of way, in shape or form. So as we go forward, man, keep your eyes open because you're going to see these three faces in a lot of different places. Sir. Oh, man, that was a good one. I'm about to know, run through this one. wall right now. <laughs> paint it, bro. <laughs> <laughs> was, hey, we might have to get real real quick, man. Real, man. No, um, I'm excited. Dude, this is so great. I, I can't wait to sit down with you again. And we have so much, like I said, so much to talk about. Um, I don't know. If, was there anything else we needed to go over today or, or even just touch? I mean, I think we did so much with this episode. I, like I said, I'm literally about to run through a wall. And I, all I can think is, like, if you're watching this and – you wonder like what's going on. We're figuring it out as we go. And I want you to be a part. What, what do you always say? Follow our, follow our journey, join our mission. Let's and get it. it that, that, that hits perfect. You know? So how do you do that? You subscribe, you follow, you share, help us blow up this. If you listened to this whole interview, if you're still listening to this right now, there's a reason it's because you mess with what we're saying. And, you would have shut us off a long time ago if you didn't. So if you're still here and you want to be part of the one team, like how do you do that right now? That's sharing and helping us get this podcast to the masses because like Trey said, like I I really believe that we can change the world, but it's one person at a time. So that's one share at a time, one follow at a time. Come on. Those aren't just numbers, like you said. They're not just stats anymore. They represent a movement. Every page you follow, every account you interact with it's all digitalized into some algorithm right now <laughs> so if you mess with this positive message and you want this to reach more people interact with us it's not because we're trying to flex and we want more followers just to say we have more followers we want to change the world come so on help amen. us do that amen dude I, I you know follow our journey join our mission has been our tagline since almost day one very close to day one at the pavement group and people ask all the time like what does that mean and uh I say, man, being part of our mission is is anybody that supports us, tells their friend about us, um, you know, says something positive about us, likes something, comments on something, whatever it is. And, and we've been able to build that community to um, a level that, you know, we will never feel alone, man. Like, you know, we, we've got such amazing people that surround us. Um, that is the community that supports us. And so um, to everybody out there, what Vinny's saying is absolutely true, man. Uh, and the only way that uh, good wins over evil is by, by having the light shined on the darkness. And so the, the way that you shine 
the light in the world, man, is what eliminates darkness. And so, you know, that like, that comment, that subscribe, like you said, it's not, those aren't, those are just vanity metrics, but they represent people Come on. and they represent yeah. a, a, a positive uh, shot in the arm for a mm -hmm. movement that really is trying to do great things, man. And um, we want you to be part of it. Uh, we welcome you. Stop by the office anytime and see us. Say hello. Come sign Let the us mural. show you what you're doing. Come sign the wall here. Um, man, we just love you guys to pay attention and, and follow yeah. along and support us and cheer us on. And uh, man, that's all I got. That's a great ending right there, I think. Can I end yeah. with one little little quick message? Hit him. I, mean, hey, hey, I think you might need to walk up to the camera. Okay, here we go. <laughs> no, here we know. go. No, nope. all focus? right. <laughs> all right. Here we go. This is what I'm going to say. If you enjoy what you've seen, man. This is Athletic Aesthetic. Let me try again. That's Athletic Aesthetic and the one team, and we love you. That's it. <laughs> hey, man. Thanks for doing this. Thank That's you. Good. Appreciate you.